What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we are taking a look at another patron's tune review. Stick around. Today, I'm excited. We're diving into a CTSV. This is a 2013, I believe, CTSV wagon. I love these cars. And, and our, our patron, Jim, is having an issue on doing virtual volumetric efficiency tuning. And he's seen one of the main problems that we see a lot of the time uh, whenever we go out and do this stuff of getting rich to lean. And you'll see uh, specifically right here, this is the rich stuff's probably going to be in the morning where the air temp is a little bit cooler. We've got 46 degrees over here. And then whenever it's lean, we've got 95 degrees. And one thing to look at is the engine coolant temp. Make sure that there's not a big skew between there and we're at 192 versus 180. And the first thing I always tell people whenever that is happening is check out your charge temp bias. And, and Jim's already zeroed this out. And what this table does basically is it does a blend between the engine coolant temp and the IATs to do fuel correction, fueling correction based on temperature. And whenever we see this a lot of time where there's some bias from cold to warm like that, we like to shift the bias towards IAT. That tends to help. Uh, we're still warming the air up a little bit as it's going through the manifold, the, the uh, poly manifold manifolds or the uh you, you know the the plastic manifolds don't have this issue as retaining heat nearly as bad but the heads are still going to have heat so the the air temp is going to get uh warmed up some and that bias helps to compensate to that and so it's always going to be biased more towards uh iat on the high end as we get into uh, higher speeds and higher airflow, you'll see this go down to zero normally. And then on the lower end, whenever the air's not moving as fast, it's going to bias more towards engine coolant temp. And a test that we can always do is to go in there, zero this table out, see if that helps. But I think because he's already done this, that we might have a different issue. And it's going to just be based off the virtual volumetric efficiency calculations. Let's go ahead. We'll uh, move this out to a two bar setup and blow this thing up and take a look at it. here's this two bar table if we switch over to 3d pretty good pretty good looking you know there's a little bit of bumps in here but these honestly are nothing to really be concerned about there's no crazy peaks we're not seeing any of this stuff in there so uh you know i would say keep down the same track but what we need to look at is whenever we're making a change to this and i'm going to do this uh just uh let's go in here and do our graph layout Let's update this to a two bar setup real quick. So I'm going to copy my manifold absolute pressure. Come in here to manifold absolute pressure. Paste that in. Now we've got the two bar layout. So we'll grab the whole thing, copy it over and do our typical paste normal subtract by half. And something that we want to take a look at when we're doing these calculations. So we're running rich, and because of that, you can see here where we've got a 1251 to 1234. We have pulled fuel out there. We pulled fuel out there, 1302 versus 1219. We're pulling a lot of fuel out. We're pulling fuel out everywhere except for, you know, uh, where we haven't collected data. And this data being higher here is going to cause an issue. So if we go ahead and calculate this, we're looking at this 1219 versus this 1302. So... It was 1219, now it's 1240. It's actually richer than what we wanted it to be. Now, let me cancel this out. I'm going to exit out here, not save it. Let me open this one up again. And let's take a look at this again. And so. We've effectively, and you can see where he's made this changes and it's shifted this stuff down, but we're looking for a 1219 target in this area. And because this data up here is higher, it's pulling it back down. And this is all part of uh, the virtual volumetric efficiency stuff, having to maintain these shapes that you've heard me talk about in the past. And you can see right here, we've got a little bit of a peak and then a valley. And because of that valley right there, if we try to bring that valley down, this peak beside it is going to bring it back up. Or vice versa, if we bring this peak up, it's going to try and pull this valley up to maintain the math 
that makes this stuff work. And so what we would want to do is come in here, let's grab the data, let's work with the rich data here from in the morning. We'll copy this over again. Come in here and let's go ahead and do our paste by half. Take a look at this. Now, what I like to do from this point on is find my high points and then look for a low point down below it. So in this case, I'm gonna come down here and interpolate, same ordeal. We've got a 1093, we can go down to this 1073. 1185, we're gonna to have to take this one all the way down to the 1072. And these we're gonna to have to take all the way down here. And everything's working out fine until we get to about right here. Let's go ahead and go this way. 1148, we're still too high. So what we're gonna do from this point on is just bring this down a little bit. Let's go 0.99. We're gonna multiply this 1% at a time. What I'm looking for is this 1148. I wanna get this to fall in line a little bit below that 1148. So 1137, 1176, 1283. So now I can fill these rows in here. Work with me. And look at it the other way, same ordeal, 1176 to 1479. These fall in line with those. On the top side, we should be good because everything's going to be higher, uh, 1341. And what's going to happen in an area like this where we've got a 1519 versus a 1341, it's going to pull the 1519 down and the 1341 up. Same ordeal, 1541, 1326. It's going to bring those up. So if we were to try and highlight this and calculate this, 1351 and they stayed fairly the same that's probably a zone boundary there 40 to 50 and it is actually just a very small zone so there's a little bit more action in there that makes sense but down here you can see where we made these adjustments now they fall in line for what we're trying to calculate better because we have sloped these out and if we go over and look at this we've kind of gotten rid of this little valley specifically right there now there's still a valley right beside it that we can look at and target where we have lower data uh, between two higher points. And so let's see, let's do a split window here. Blow this thing up big so we can see our data. Slide this thing over and we're looking specifically for this valley. I kind of get it to this point. You can see where it's this dark green. We've got a 1003 that everything around it is higher. If I see something like that, I'm going to come in here and smooth that out. And you can either use the smooth all way or interpolate all ways. Since we're only grabbing such a small area, I'm going to go ahead and interpolate it just to flatten that area. That green, dark green dot disappeared. Now, if we calculate it, watch the graph over here whenever we calculate. Stayed almost exactly the same because the math likes that shape. And that's the whole thing about virtual volumetric efficiency is trying to get the math to like the shape. Now... This is where it gets complicated. We go out, we pull a log on this, and we've got areas where maybe this row right here, we're really rich, and then we're lean over here for whatever reason. That's whenever we need to start looking at our zone numbers and making sure that we don't have a cell switch. So if we've got a rich followed by a lean and they're in the same zone, as long as it curves up and then down as it goes down through there, that's perfectly fine. And these zones are pretty small down here. That's what's nice about having smaller zones down in the lower area where idle is. It's easier to make adjustments to smaller zones in areas like that than we get off into the uh, bigger zones out here. 29 being huge, that's a big, big, wide zone out there that that uh is going to have a bigger more defined dome shape into it and on top of it we're getting up to that point where the mass airflow is doing a lot of the heavy lifting anyways so uh pay attention to your zone size pay attention to your boundaries and then pay attention to the data outside of the data that you pasted virtual volumetric efficiency works a lot better whenever you're going in there and making adjustments off the fringe of the data that you pasted in making sure as you said, if we look again here and we can paste this data back in, making sure that you don't have this high rise of data between two low points because whenever we pull this up and you can see this valley down there, if we calculate it, it can skew that valley out and it's changing data that we haven't hit on the data log.
Okay, Jim, hopefully that helps you out on getting some of that sorted out. Good idea already on the IAT stuff. Uh, if you keep on fighting this, go back in, add some of that bias back in there, but maybe lower it by half. So you still have a little bit of engine coolant temp bias, but you're mostly relying on the IATs. And then ideally, whenever you're done doing virtual volumetric efficiency, you should be able to set the temp bias back to stock and everything should work out. Do a couple shakeout passes, verify your data, then put it back into dynamic mode, everything's happy. So that is just another tune review. Hopefully this helps some of you guys and gals out there that are doing volumetric efficiency tuning, specifically virtual volumetric efficiency tuning. You've got to really pay attention to those borders. If you have any questions, as always, hit up the comments down below. Check out the website, goatropegarage.com. I'm going to get back to work. You know the drill. ABT, always be tuning.